strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom. Oh, wait, what's the difference between wisdom and intelligence? And charisma. These are the six character abilities of Dungeons and Dragons as passed down from one edition to the next, tracing all the way back to 1974 when E. Gary Gygax received these six stats from on high. Yeah, these six stats definitely get the job done, but they're not perfect, or every new player wouldn't have to ask, what's the difference between wisdom and intelligence? There is often confusion on the difference between wisdom and intellect. And that's just one reason that I'm asking this question. Why does Dungeons & Dragons use these six stats? Where did they come from? Did D&D always use the same six stats? And why are today's ability modifiers more important than the actual ability score itself? What, what's up with that? And we'll mention a couple fun ways that other RPGs use different stats, because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and for my parents and anyone else who watches these videos without quite knowing how D&D works today, we'll start with a quick recap. Part one, mental stats are dumb. So the D&D stats, AKA abilities, can be broken down into physical and mental. And the physical ones are pretty self-explanatory. Strength is your power, and it helps you swing a sword harder. Dexterity is your agility, and it helps you shoot a bow with more accuracy. Constitution is not a long document full of rules. We have plenty of books for that. Con is your endurance, and it helps you sustain more attacks or resist poison and disease. But the mental stats are trickier, like I can almost guarantee that after hearing the little joke about wisdom and intelligence in the intro, someone already commented, intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing that it doesn't belong in a fruit salad. Yeah, it makes sense, literally, but like, you're gonna rely on one literal convoluted definition to try to clear up another convoluted definition? And the one that I've used myself goes, well, Intelligence is like book smarts, and wisdom is like street smarts. What if someone writes their street smarts into a book? It's all just knowledge, and if anything, wisdom in D&D today represents your awareness and how well you can notice things. Just remember, intellect is about knowing, wisdom is about feeling. At last, but certainly not least, charisma. It's your social intelligence. It helps you persuade non-player characters or even monsters. <laughs> And in a second, we'll talk about how charisma used to be the most powerful stat in the game. But the important part, as far as the D&D rules go today, is that all of these abilities have a score, usually between 8 and 18, as well as a modifier based on that score, usually minus 1 to plus 4, which modifies your dice rolls. So 99% of the time, you're using the ability modifiers to play the game, not the actual ability, because it is basically a vestigial element of the game and how it used to work. Part two, when charisma was king. So I should start by saying I am no RPG historian, but I did talk to one. Griffith Morgan, co-director of Secrets of Blackmoor, the true history of Dungeons and Dragons, sent me this photo. Oh, no, that one was from Seth Gorkowski. He's a rascal. Griff sent me this photo of a character sheet from a Napoleonic game run by Dave Arneson, co-creator of D&D, just a few years before original D&D was published. Stats include looks, brains, sex, because sex appeal was an important character trait in these royal diplomatic campaigns where alliance by marriage could have significant in-game consequences. But this other character sheet from Arneson's Blackmore campaign, the true precursor of D&D as a role-playing game rather than a war game, starts to look familiar. I mean, it still has a sex score, but it's a list of skills, stats, and weapons, and the main difference from today is that each one of these columns is a different character run by the same player because this newfangled adventure game was pretty lethal. So despite the immense influence of war games on D&D's creators, it seems that Gygax and Arneson coined the six character stats we know today when they first published D&D in 1974. But only Dexterity had recognizable modifiers with a minus one to a plus one for firing missiles or making ranged attacks. Therefore, this original version of D&D used stats 
very differently than we do today, almost exclusively as a way to boost a character's earned experience points. Each of the three character classes at the time, fighter, magic user, cleric, had a designated prime requisite or primary stat and all it did was boost your experience points if you had a high score. To paraphrase from an informative video by Daddy Rolled a One, linked below, if you had a fighter with 6 strength or 18 strength, the only difference is that the fighter with 18 strength will earn more experience points. That's it. Oh, and to quote original Dungeons & Dragons, wisdom rating will act much as does that for intelligence which is a weird way of saying wisdom and intelligence are basically the same thing, and that's why it's confusing even today. But unlike today, charisma was overpowered because it dictated how many hirelings your character could have. And in a campaign where one player gets only one hireling, but their ally gets 12 hirelings, basically two or three adventuring parties of their own, that player is much, much more powerful. So I think, the best way to balance this was to put some of those hirelings to work. Have them run a tavern in town, or a temple for your cleric, or a fort for your fighter, a tower for your wizard. That way, your main characters have a cool home base to return to, and they share some of the benefits that come with owning a tavern, temple, tower, or fort. I'm a big fan of this approach, but hirelings and bases can be kinda hard to manage, so I recently published my own simple supplement, bases and businesses for easily managing this fun part of the game without letting it take over the real game. It's got those four types of bases and 40 different businesses, each with unique 5e character benefits and simple rules for building and maintaining them, spreading your character's wealth, attracting hirelings, all fully compatible with most D20 fantasy RPGs. You can download a free sample PDF of just the tavern rules through the link below, or get the whole thing by joining my Patreon at the Builder tier, but it's only available to Builder patrons until December 18th, at which point they get a new 5e resource, and this one will go into my Patreon shop tab, and it will be available on DriveThruRPG, and I'll add those links below when the time comes. Now, the actual way that original D&D balanced charisma and every character ability was far more simple. Randomization, pure luck. That's the mechanical reason for why character stats are randomly generated in D&D. And the other reason is that it's fun. But randomization worked well in OD&D because the stats, besides charisma, were not very impactful. Today, totally random stats isn't as fun when all your stats affect all your dice rolls through modifiers. Part 3. The Real Stats – Ability Mods Modifiers came on the scene very quickly, with Strength getting its own table in the 1975 Greyhawk supplement similar to the Charisma table we saw earlier. This concept was expanded significantly in the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook, where every stat, even Constitution, had its own unique table of ability modifiers. But then, it was streamlined in the 1981 Mold Bay Basic D&D set, where every stat used nearly the same modifiers, essentially how D&D 5e still handles it today. But today, the modifiers run the game, that's what players add to their weapon attack rolls and damage, spellcasting rolls, saving throws, their hit points, their armor class, their spell save DC, and they are even used as limits for how many times per day some character features may be used. Now, we've reached this point where many modern fantasy RPGs, based on D&D, have dropped the big and useless ability score, opting to only use the small and ubiquitous ability modifier as the main number for the stat. Part 4 Oh yeah, other RPGs exist. So there are thousands of role-playing games today using their own variations on character stats. Even D&D once had an optional seventh stat called Comeliness. Thanks again to Seth for the reminder. This stat determined your character's physical attractiveness, kind of revitalizing some of those from back in the day, but Comeliness didn't stick around because it just didn't fit with the way most people played this fantasy adventure game. That's the same reason you don't hear much about the optional abilities for sanity and honor in the 5e Dungeon Master's Guide. Because yeah, you could try to just tweak the rules of D&D, but to truly capture the feel and fun of a Wild West RPG or sci-fi or comic book superheroes, you'd be better off with different rules and different stats. 
The original creators of D&D knew this too, because they published other games around the same time that worked very differently from D&D. But when it comes to how many stats a game should have, many modern fantasy RPGs still capture the same theme with only three stats. Strength, dexterity, and willpower, to summarize the mental stats. Funny enough, I independently did almost the same thing in early 2017 when, with very little RPG experience, I made a Google Doc for my own fantasy game that used strength, dexterity, and intelligence. So why does D&D use these six stats? Because Gygax and Arneson chose a relatively short list of physical and mental attributes that are mostly intuitive, and they evoke the themes of a fantasy adventure game very well, and the big one, tradition. We know now that fewer stats can and do get the job done for many modern fantasy games, just like how using only modifiers has become the norm, even in D&D. Personally, I doubt D&D would ever drop ability scores because that's just the way it's always been done, and they're kinda stuck with all six stats now because over time they've added many new character classes and then turned each of the six stats into a class's prime requisite of sorts. But who knows? Maybe they'll add a seven stat in the future. Now remember to grab that free sample PDF of bases and businesses down below, like this video and share it with your game group. Thank you for your support and keep building.